Hello everyone. Uh, so welcome to this course that is five train. Okay. Uh, so uh, now let's understand. Uh, so what all um, what is five train and uh, uh, some of the basic concepts of the five train. Okay. So when your team uh, needs to create a dashboard and matrices uh, using data from external sources like Salesforce or MySQL, of course they they may face a, a difficult problem, right? So how to get all the data into one place in order to uh, in order to merge it all together? So traditionally, you would need to have a large team of data engineers, okay, to connect all these various data sources, okay, set up ETL jobs using either custom scripts or Python libraries like Airflow um, or any other libraries, right? So then they would have to ensure that those pipelines were constantly running. So this method is both time consuming and expensive, right? So thankfully, there are uh, many modern tools, okay, so that uh, can help your team simplify your data workflow, okay? so. Uh, instead of uh, 10 data engineers, right? So that's where the five train comes into picture. Okay, so uh, let's understand what is five train. Okay, so a uh, five train is a highly uh, comprehensive ETL tool. Okay, that is becoming uh, more popular every day. So you pop, uh, you're probably wondering what is ETL, right? So of course, we know like ETL stands for extract, load, and transform. Okay, so these are the steps uh, required to take your data from uh, a system like Salesforce or QuickBooks and insert into a centralized. Uh, data storage system okay so often we refer to as a data warehouse right so basically a five train allows uh, for efficient collection of business processes and consumer uh, data from related applications websites and servers and these collected data is then transferred to the other tools for the analytics marketing and data warehousing purpose okay so you can see so we have a many uh, different data warehouses and in the fight we have a concept of connectors okay so where the uh, we'll have a, so many connectors okay so we connect with the data sources okay basically we have a source and we have a destination we'll be choosing the source from where we connect to data and from where and where we need to put up that data right so either it could be uh, when we're collecting the data of course it could be from application servers or websites or any uh, any third party software right and uh, so finally we'll be uh, transfer that particular uh, data for the uh, like uh, for the other tools like analytics either could be for the marketing and data uh, data warehouse purpose right so this is what so what is fighter it's a fully managed data pipeline as a service so here fully managed why fully managed so here we are not worried about any other hardware components right uh, so uh, everything is managed by this company that is fighter okay it's a uh, it's fighter is basically uh, uh, it's a fully managed data pipeline as a service so no maintenance or configuration or coding so we should uh, we are not worried about any maintenance has because it's a fully managed right and uh, about the configuration or we are not uh, not even writing any code uh, into this platform so you, uh, so as i told you so we have almost 170 plus connectors okay so that is, and even the predefined schemas so uh, it's very simple setup okay so we'll be showing uh, i'll be showing in the demo right so even it has 24 bar 7 support so you can see, so we have many pre-built uh, connectors, okay? Uh, so we have a data normalization, all the uh, pre-processing. So this is what the entirely fully managed by the fight trend, okay? So when it transforms the destination, of course, all the schemas, okay? So we'll even it will be managed by the uh, fight train, okay? These are some of the, uh, uh, this is what the fight train is. I hope you understood, right? So uh, now let's understand the uh, uh, architecture diagram of the fight train, okay? So, uh, so fight train basically connects to all your uh, supported data sources and loads the data uh, from them into your destination, right? So that's what I told you. So each data source has one or more connectors, okay, that run as the independent processes that persist for the duration of one update. So a single Phyton account made up of multiple connectors, okay, loads data from multiple data sources into one or more destination. That's what it means, okay. It's what simple architecture defines here, okay. So we have, you can see, so we have, uh, so uh, for example, first we have a connect, right? So Phyton connects to a data source using our connectors, right? So using this Phyton connectors, and uh, fundamentally there are two types of connectors either it is push or pull so we'll be getting into this okay so when we talk about the pull connectors so fighter pull connectors actively uh, retrieve or pull data from the source and fighter connects to uh, to and uh, downloads data from the source uh, source systems at the fixed intervals okay so here uh, they use the ssl encrypted connection to a source system to retrieve data using a variety of methods okay uh, so uh, when we talk about the push connectors okay so in the push connectors such as uh, snow blue okay uh, so uh, where the so source systems send data to the fight as events okay so this is 
what the push connector is. So, uh, so you can see, so we have a different layers in the architecture diagram. We have a source layer, we have an ingestion layer, storage, compute transformation, and business intelligence layers. Okay. Uh, so uh, we know source layer. Okay, with the help of connectors, we are connect, uh, collecting all the data, right? Uh, so uh, basically, um, so in the ingestion layer, okay. So so we have the Python, which is the data pipeline. Okay. Uh, so finally. Uh, so we have the uh, data warehouse okay that is what the destination is that is either could be storage computer transformation and of course we can connect that with the business intelligence layer right so this is uh, all about uh, uh, architecture diagram okay so this is what actually the root causes okay so before like uh, 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 see we identify the sources we have a scope we define a schema we lead ETL insights but what what is the problem okay so for example if we are changing we are requesting any new data set or we have made some changes in the schema it would be very difficult right so that what the report breaks here this is what the uh, root cause uh, so which we face in the data pipelines so this is what the fire train approaches okay so which is simple uh, stable and the secure okay so uh, uh, as it all is fully managed and we don't require any configuration okay so even we, we even we not write any code also right so uh, so if i list these some of the pre-built connectors you can see we have a connectors from sales support human resource finance productivity marketing databases events files functions warehouse right so when we talk about sales again like of course uh, which is frequently used like uh, salesforce right so you can see we have microsoft dynamic 365 um the many many uh, many like uh, microsoft uh, dynamics now right so of course hr uh, so human resource we have the uh, work day uh, for the finance we can take some of the examples and uh, when we consider the database we can, can see like we have a major database like mysql mongodb dynamodb sql servers right so when we talk about the warehouses which is also frequently used azure data explorer azure sql big uh, Square, mysql okay redshift snowflake okay you can see like there are many pre-built connectors okay so uh, this is what the fire train is okay so let's now understand how this fire train works okay so there are the main three factors so, okay which is automated okay uh, resilient and cloud native so we, uh, it is automated so fire train creates and maintains a perfect replica of your data with minimal user intervention across 170 connectors okay so uh, we should not uh, so of course we are not worried about the data failures right so because it can it connects uh, it it creates the multiple replica of the data so it's resilient okay so um, the, the core architecture of the fire train enables uh, recovery from any point of failure with no user intervention requires okay so uh, so we have the uh, resilient feature and we it's a cloud native so so here in the fire train so engineers monitor and update uh, the code uh, as the source changes okay so uh, so even uh, it supports the automated normalization behaviors okay uh, entity relationship diagrams okay and automated schema migration so if you are adding any new column it automatically updated if you are removing the column if you are changing type or adding the objects or removing the objects automatically take care of all these things uh, even it has incremental batch updates okay if you are inserting updating or deleting the data okay it automatically updates uh, uh, at the uh, destination uh, okay so if you are making any changes at the source so it will automatically update in the uh, in the destination uh, area Hello everyone. Okay, so in this video, let's try to understand what are the different integrations uh, we have available in Fivetrain. Okay, so these are some of the uh, integrations in Fivetrain. Okay, we have applications. Okay, so where we can replicate the data from your cloud apps into your destinations. Next, we have a databases. Okay, so where you can replicate data from your databases to your destination. Next, we have a files. Upload a file from your storage service to your destination. Then we have events integration, so uh, where you can send your tracking events to your destination. Uh, so in the destinations, okay, centralize your data source into single destinations. And finally, we have functions, okay, where you can create your own data connectors as extensions of Fivetrain. Okay, these are some of the uh, integrations present in Fivetrain. Hello everyone. Okay, so now let's see how we can just create an account here, right? So if you have already an account, you can just uh, uh, login right so if you have a uh, account okay setup takes almost like five, uh, five to ten minutes right so let's get uh, let's get started here okay so you can just ser uh, search for fight train right so if you search for fight train okay so here you can see uh, www.fivetrain.com right uh, so let's click on to this Okay, so here you can see, so uh, uh, this is a page, okay, so Python page, which is most reliable data pipelines you can never build. 
okay so we it comes with uh, 14 days free trail okay so here uh, uh, so here we have something called start trail okay if you have already account you can just click on this login okay so if you want to start a uh, trail version okay of five train okay so just uh, you need to enter the first name last name email uh, then phone number and the company okay so where you're working then the country and uh, the employee size range in your company okay then describe your data integration tool whether it's for internal or for any other purpose you just click on uh, uh, what sign up and uh, there'll be a um, <coughs> email confirmation okay you need to activate that okay so i have already an account okay so what i'll do i'll just go and search for a uh, fight train okay so i'll just log in here okay so uh this is yeah so this is my account okay so you can see like i have activated it's uh, just 13 days remaining for me in the trail version okay so then we, i need to add the credit card and then, then i need to continue okay so here we have uh, different options like we have a connectors we have a uh, transformations okay this is all fire time transformations okay so then we have a uh, destinations okay so right now i have just created one destination that is snowflake okay so we have a logs uh users um, uh, alerts okay all the basic details and uh, you can just access from over here okay so even you can just check the status okay uh fight and status okay so you can just update all this like uh, how it's working with its events functions productivity destinations apis okay so all the details you can just access from here okay uh and uh, again here okay so these are the connectors which have rightly connected okay you can see i have this uh, uh two connectors which is rightly paused and i have one connector called uh, demo sheets which is currently active okay so here uh, i'll just show you how like in as a simple example demo okay we'll try to uh, uh from so we'll connect right from source to destination the resource would be the google sheets and destination would be a snowflake okay so to add the different uh, connectors okay just click on the add connectors you can see like we have so many connectors okay so regarding databases marketing okay when it comes to databases we have uh, sql okay so mongodb uh, google cloud okay azure sql database oracle uh, dynamodb mysql okay so sql server rds uh, Heroku, you can see it's related to all the databases. Next, we have a marketing analytics, okay, so with the Salesforce, okay, Google Ads, Google Sheets, okay, analytics, okay, you can see like even the YouTube uh, analytics, okay, so there are so many segments here, you can see almost 80 sources. We have a uh, sales analytics, even it has 21 sources, okay, Salesforce, Google Sheets, Google Drive. Uh, sandbox that is salesforce sandbox dropbox google play okay you can see like so many connectors under the product uh, analytics again we have 58 sources uh, sql server okay google drive mongodb github okay jira right so oracle dynamodb um, amplitude uh, dropbox okay so you can see like related to product analytics so this is for the finance okay and ops analytics uh, for the support analytics and for the engineering analytics okay so amazon s3 you can see there are many things right so you can see like there are so many connectors uh, which is available in the fire train okay so uh, of course we'll not be able to do all the uh, examples okay so we'll try to uh, see how we can just connect uh, the um, from source to destination and of course like everything they have given in the hands-on the steps how we can just you can just you need to follow just you need to write the uh, click the few options and you can just everything is ready here right so no need to write any code uh, in the fire train okay as i told you right so this is uh, about the dashboard overview okay so next let's move on to the next section hello everyone okay so now let's see some of the uh, pricing options available in python okay so uh so we uh, uh, as i told you so we have uh, uh 14 days free trail okay so if you are you can see so all our trails are on the enterprise plan so here uh so if i just check it over here okay so start us with the uh so then one dollar okay so you can see this is a start free trail okay so here like we have a connectors and databases you can see like uh the synchronized frequency about the how many connectors we have okay so uh, whether the 14 days be available in this particular plan or not okay so when it comes to security you can see like uh, uh what are the different security options we have then it comes to support then we have extensibility so based on these features okay so we have uh, four plans the starters standard enterprise and business critical so right now we are in this enterprise plan okay which is a 14 days free trail okay so for i think 14 days free trial is for all the plans here okay and you can see synchronous frequency here we have a max of one hour okay uh you have 15 minutes five minutes and this is just five minutes max okay 
and you can see the requirements okay so for the foundational data integration needs for the advanced analytics needs and the production workloads for enhanced data security speed access and the support and this plan is for the maximum security over the data infrastructure uh, pipelines and access okay when we see the security here okay you can see like most of the features is available uh, in the business critical all the checked okay so only the enterprise we don't have this uh, uh, operate fire train in choose of region like aws and azure okay so these are, these are options are not available and when it comes to this okay we have this two levels of uh, uh, security okay that is type 2 and here the data processing locations okay so these are some of the plans so based on your requirements or your company requirements you can just select uh, which plan is good for you hello everyone okay so in this video let's explore the fighter dashboard okay so when i go to the uh, you can see like uh, warehouse is like uh, i knew run okay i can just check here <laughs> so here we have something called you can see like all the warehouses here okay if i connecting so here uh if i just go to the managed account okay so here um uh, the fight run dashboard is basically we know like it's a web-based control center for the fight run account right so um so here uh uh, basically when we go for the management dashboard okay so here in the manage in the account management uh, page okay so we say subsection of the fight and dashboard okay where you can manage the administrative aspects of your account okay so only account owners uh, have this access to the account management page of the fight and dashboard okay so here you can see like uh, we have a different tabs here right so we have a destination okay so uh, yeah, here the uh, in the this is uh, so we have different actions right so in the destination here the access the dashboard for each destination and manage the destination associated with the accounts okay so here you can see like we have a warehouse and uh, this is what the destination i have right now have added okay so this is what the type that is snowflake okay so this is what the warehouses and your uh, my role okay so you can see like a uh, administrator okay so next we have a users okay so here it manage users and their permissions okay you can see like i am the uh, account administrator okay so if you want to add new user for example if i just go to the here destination again you can just add the destination you can just uh, add the destination name okay uh, so you can just continue okay you can just uh, add this so if i just go to the users so if i want to add the new user again you can just enter the first name last name email and what is the uh, role here whether it's account administrator or account analyst account billing or reviewer or destination creator all right so just you need to invite those but uh, the user which you are adding next we have a roles okay so here uh, uh, to manage and create the custom roles to restrict the access in more uh, granular way okay so for example when we talk about the account administrator you can see like i have uh, uh, the uh, permissions basically you can just think of permissions okay so here what are the permissions when we when we have this account administrator so can view and change the account information including billing uh, users roles api access security settings even can manage create delete destinations and creators i even can manage the transformations as well as the logs okay so the role under the account administrator for the account analyst okay so if you are inviting a user as account analyst so you can view the list of destination and users in the account even can view the destination and manage the transformations anyone can create manage and delete the connectors and cannot change the account information and cannot manage or delete the destinations okay so the account an uh, analyst cannot delete the destinations we have even the account billing so where uh, can manage all the billing informations okay so and cannot of course delete the access cannot access the destination itself here right so account reviewer uh, destination creator okay so destination administrator destination analyst and destination reviewer okay and with respect to the account and destination and connectors you can see like uh, all the information here and right now i am the destination administrator where i can view manage and delete these destinations even i can create manage and delete the connectors as well even i can manage and uh, transformation logs and cannot access the account information so okay so but i can access the account information from the account administrator you can see the the number of users here right so here um uh here the user is one that's let's uh where i have created the account right so if you just expand this okay so even you can just edit some of the settings here and uh you can just manage okay so destination level permissions you can just set anyone can just set the account level permissions as well here right so this is uh, uh, all about the roles okay so next we have a settings okay so you can just change the account security informations here okay all the basic details you can just check okay so about the ap configuration or uh, uh, authent uh, or authentication configurations okay next we have a billing section okay so uh, where you can view the account billing details monitor the credit uh, consumptions uh, or change your 
plan as well here right so there you can see so as i told you i have different plans okay you can just uh, here including trail so here you can just see i can just stop and select the plan i can just go uh, uh based on my requirement so next finally usage okay so where you can view the account credit usage and monthly active rows okay so here you can just see all the details here okay so right now i've just kind of this is one of the connector okay so uh, there is google sheets so based on that i can just check uh, the monthly active uh, rows here okay uh, all the basic uh, billing information or oh, sorry usage okay so credit usage can be accessed from this particular tab Hello everyone. Okay, so in this video, let's explore about the architecture of the Fivetrain. Okay, so uh, we know like Fivetrain connects uh, to all your supported data sources and loads the data from them into your destination. Okay, so we have a source and we have a destination, and each data source has one or more connectors, right? So you can see, uh, so we have like um, uh, applications, databases, events, files, and the functions. Okay, and each data source has one or more connectors. So um, uh, so where the connectors that run as an independent process, okay, that persists uh, for the duration of one update, okay, and uh, just remember, so a single Python account, okay, so made up of uh, multiple connectors and loads data from multiple data sources into one or more destinations, okay. So here, um, so you can see, so connectors, we of course, I, uh, I'll show you the different connectors available. Even I have just showed you, right? So Python connectors receive the data from the source using the encrypted connection. You can see it's all encrypted, okay. So, um, so next, uh, we have uh, like that is current, okay. So where the Python uh, connects to your data sources, okay, using the connectors provided by the Python. And uh, basically, there are two types of when you talk about the connectors, okay, of course, there are two types of connectors, we have a pull connectors, and we have something called push connectors. So pull connectors is like uh, where, uh, where it is used to uh, retrieve or pull data from the sources, okay, so where the fire and connect to the uh, um, uh, uh, that is downloads data that is the data from the source systems at the fixed intervals okay so where it will pull the data uh, based on the int frequency which we have provided so next we have a push connectors okay so where uh, uh, where it is uh, so where we have the uh, example as no uh, blue okay so uh, where the data uh, where the system send the data to the fighter as an event where it is pushing the data this pull and push okay so this is all about the two types of connectors we have okay so next we have uh, uh, core okay so where the fighter um, uh, core normalizes cleans and writes the data to the encrypted store so basically it will prepare the data okay so once the connector process the uh, process the ingest the data uh, query results okay so then fire train will normalize clean sorts and duplicate the data okay so and the the purpose of normalization cleaning is the is to that format the data in the uh, optimal way for the destination okay so uh, of course this is what it takes case okay next we have a write okay so where the fighter writes the incremental lows data into the, your destination using the encrypted connection okay so next finally we have a destination okay so where the data uh, is sent to the destination okay from the temporary uh, from temporary data storage so a uh, fighter and copies the files into the staging tables in destination so in the process so uh, that fighter will transmit the uh, uh, data to the destination okay so this is what the simple architecture they follow okay so you can see um, um, this entire architecture here right so this is what the uh, architecture uh, uh, they use it in the uh, fighter hello everyone so welcome back so in this video uh, let's see uh, a small demo like how we can just set up a connectors okay so before getting uh, started okay so i'll just show you like what uh, i'm just connecting okay so from source i'm connecting the uh, google sheet and at the destination i'll be connecting uh, snowflake okay <clears throat> So uh, the steps remain the same for all the connectors. Okay, I'll just show you the one connector properly so that you can just follow the steps. Okay, because there are uh, thousands or like hundreds of connectors here, right? So uh, I can't show like almost almost hundred hundred connectors. Yeah, so few of them I'll just show you, but uh, others uh, will remain the same. Okay, if you know, then all the processing will remain uh, will uh, you can just follow the steps there. Okay, uh, so here I've just created a sheet called NBA players. Okay, so where I have first name, last name, position, and team, and you can see like I have a few data. I've just uploaded that in my Google Drive. Okay, so even I've just simultaneously opened my uh, Snowflake here. Okay, <coughs> okay, so let's go to the classic console. Uh, okay. <coughs> 
fine so here to connect it new uh, so i've already connected okay so but i'll show you the entire step process okay so uh, if i just go click and add connector okay so it will ask for me the all data so you can see like we have so many data process okay uh, if you have a specific like databases marketing sales okay you can just check which one is suitable for you right so i'm just going for the google sheets okay so continue with the setup okay so um, so here okay so here you need to provide the destination schema and this destination schema will be in the uh, snowflake i'll just show you that okay in the fire train okay if i just go and refresh uh, in the public in the information schema uh, uh google sheets <clears throat> okay so this is actually the schema which you give uh, okay so when you how we can just identify the uh, uh, your uh, <coughs> under the fire train database we have views under the public it's showing up okay so we need to give uh, 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 a destination schema so this schema will be permanent okay so so you can just refer this uh, this particular google sheets from the snowflake okay so uh, so you need to even give the destination table okay so how the table will uh, so what will be the our table name okay so you can just uh, find this okay so i think i have just opened my another account i'll just open quickly one more account <laughs> Once again. okay <clears throat> okay so what you can do is <coughs> okay so we'll uh, we'll get started okay so you can just go to the connectors okay so you can just click on to the add connector okay so i'm just going for the google sheets okay once you go into the google sheets okay so here you will have a setup guide here simultaneously okay so here um 
you can see all the basic details like how we can just set up it's it's very friendly and it's given a stepwise okay so for example here uh so here we need to give the destination schema okay and this is a table team okay so this uh destination uh schema and destination table you need to provide it okay from where you can just access it okay and uh next is authentication method okay so here um uh, what you can do is okay first we need to provide the uh uh uh, authentication okay so first is like you need to uh, give the uh, sheet you need to add this uh, you need to copy this and add this in your sheet okay you can just go to here for example this is my sheet okay you go to the share okay so and you can just click on to this i've already added you can see okay so uh, once you have added okay so next you need to copy the url of the sheet okay so after copying url of sheet you need to provide this url here okay so and find sheet okay if we click on to the find sheet okay i'll just show you that okay so if i just go and copy the same thing here copy and i'll just go to the nba players okay so i want to share okay i'll just add it okay so i'll just send okay so share anyway okay so once i have just shared okay so what i'll do i'll just copy this sheet once again I'll go here and I'll share uh, sheet URL and I click on find sheet. Okay, so as soon as I click on to the file sheet, okay. Uh, so the schema name I'm not given. Okay, it's already given. <coughs> I'll give a demo, a demo TB. Okay, so let's click on find sheet. Okay, so as soon as you click on find sheet, okay, so here. Uh, you'll uh, you'll be redirected to call something called uh, a named range. Okay, so name range is very simple. Okay, you need to go to the data. Okay, so this is my data, right? So just go to the data and go to the data here and set the name range. Okay, I have so name range. Okay, I've already set the name range to players. Okay, basically I need to group this data as a name range. Okay, so once I've just done that. Okay, so what I've done. Okay, so next I need to select that. For example, players have already selected. Save and test. Okay, so once you click on save and test, it will uh, check the connection test. Okay, so this is my source. Okay, from where I'm just getting the sheet to the snowflake. Okay, uh, so I need to provide all the steps so you can you have some right. So we have to give the Google um, all this URLs and stuff and you can see the guidance there. Okay, so guide also there right and just you can see all the values. Now I need to go and select the data. Okay, so next uh, step is very much important where you just uh, you can see if we google sick okay so you can see like it's already have done okay for that reason uh because i've already connected my uh, destination right so that is uh, uh to the uh, uh so if i just go and check my destination you can see it's already uh, connected to my uh, warehouse that is snowflake okay so uh, so if i just directly connect it okay so you can see like uh, so i can just refresh this <coughs> okay so what i'll do i'll just quickly create one new account and i'll just try to do that okay so what i can do is uh let's go to the uh fight trend here okay so let's go and create the new so start with the google uh so i'll just create a new account now Okay, I'll just enter quickly some data. Okay, so I am run uh, also my email address uh, gmail dot com. Okay, uh, so the phone number I'll just give. Okay, so company I'll just give I need on and the country is uh, India and employee size roughly I'll just give okay so it's internal sign up so traffic lights okay so I'll just come back uh, once I just uh, done the verification okay so let's continue uh, our discussion in the next video so hello everyone so welcome back uh, i have verified my uh, email okay so now let's go and set up the connector okay so uh, okay so as i told you so we'll go to the google sheets okay continue setup again this account i don't have destination right so because they have already added okay uh, so let's follow this step okay so here google sheets let's keep it uh, imo and table uh, demo okay 
and uh, so let's add this copy so i'll just use the same sheet i'll go share okay um uh, send share anyway okay so this is done i'll just copy this url i'll go and paste the sheet url here and find sheet okay so name range uh, is players and uh, us i'll keep a data processing location and here i'll just use the aws save and test <coughs> okay so let's go to the continue okay so here you need to select your destination okay so here selecting destination i'll go with the snowflake okay so you can see like we have different destination whether it's bigquery uh redshift okay post uh postgresql okay so then sql server uh data breaks mysql right so i'll just go with the snowflake continue to set up okay so here you need to provide the host name okay so one second uh so if i just go to my snowflake uh, um, uh, go to the snowflake sign into existing account okay okay fine uh, uh, so i was here right <coughs> okay so first i need to provide the host so i need to copy this host from here uh so basically where is the host yeah so um uh, my host is uh here right so i need to copy this that is from snowflake.com i don't want http okay so i'll just control c okay so i'll just add here host okay so and this is the port and uh, the fighter uh, user okay uh, i'll just keep it default and database also i'll just keep it as fighter and i need to provide a password here okay so one minute okay so i'll just give one second okay so role let's keep it default okay so gloat service aws and now let's go and test okay so before that okay here we have a setup guide right so you can see like i have just filled the basic details uh, the port and the host we know where from where to take and this is a user while accessing that okay so this is user this is the database okay so uh the user um, user is i've just set to you uh, fight an user and this is the database and this is what the password uh, i've just set okay so you can see the prerequisite here so first we need to go to the snowflake and copy this okay and i need to run this log into snowflake data warehouse copy the following to new worksheet okay so i'll just go uh to the uh snowflake okay just add the uh new once again what i'll do is i'll just
okay i'll go to new worksheet i'll just copy this okay so here uh, so we are creating uh, uh, what her role name called fighter role a user a uh, fighter warehouse okay so here i'll just give as 0 1 okay so add the database name as fighter uh, database uh, 0 1 okay so list everything let's uh, keep it default and the password is one two three okay so let's run this okay so before clicking on to this connect there in the fire train okay so here save and test before that you need to run the script in your worksheet that is in the snowflake okay i'll just click on to the run okay uh, so let's click on run okay it's doing about okay so statement successfully run you can see the fire train database has been connected okay so under the information schema i don't have anything okay so what i'll do so i'll just go and test the connection now okay so if i just go here and save and test So now Veros, uh, diff, uh, okay, I've set the password wrong. Sorry. Yeah, so I'll get error here. I want to show you that, okay, what the mistake I've done. Okay. <clears throat> so of course, uh, it will it will not run, okay? So it will run five to six times. Okay, see, if your connection uh, is failing, right? So it will try to run it again and again, five to six times, it will show you error also, okay? So first, I will just wanted to show you error. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is what you see the, the entire steps you can say like even if you want to connect with SC or any other uh, sources it follow the same steps. Okay. <clears throat> So it will take time, you can just fast forward the video. <clears throat> yeah so you can see i'm getting a uh, so action is like uh, incorrect user email password right so i just waiting for that so what was the error here because this password okay so you need to give whatever the password we have said is password one two three right so you need to give it's not your own it's not your snowflake password okay i was making the same mistake okay so it's password one two three so this if you want to change it like role user you can just while pasting here you can just change all this basic information here okay so while we are doing it okay so i'll just Go and check save and test once again. <clears throat> 
So if you are everything is correct and fine, okay, it will connect it uh, within a minute, okay. So and main thing, uh, I think if you know the snowflake, right? So this everything has to be set, right? So where uh, data warehouses, PyTrain, this one and this. So default warehouse test. Okay, so let it be complete. Okay, so I'll just uh, continue this in the next video. So hello everyone, welcome back. So once it's got connected, okay, so you can see uh, the in the destination section, okay, so our snowflake is connected, okay, so even like uh, in the fire train, okay, so before connecting, okay, so before uh, you getting into the destination section, okay, so once you have just tried to connect it, okay, you need to start the initial synchronization. What is initial synchronization? So whatever the data you're in the destination will pass to the snowflake, okay. So once you run the code, of course, in the fire train database, okay, so uh, the Google Sheet that schema which we created is created. And the table I have created as demo because in my previous account, the uh, the Snowflake account has been blocked. Okay, I've just created a new Snowflake account. And even I've just created like, uh, I've just copy pasted the same uh, query. Okay, whatever I've just showed you. Right here, the, it remains the same like Python Warehouse. Okay, that's what it has created. Okay, database and warehouse. And I've created Google Sheet as a schema and demo as a table. Okay, when I just uh, preview the data, okay, this is what the data is, right? So I'm just getting the data. So I need to start the initial synchronization. Okay, so your data is ready to sync. So as soon as I click on the start initial, uh, initial sync, okay. So after the initial sync, okay, you'll be able to access the data uh, from the Snowflake. Okay, which is a data warehouse, right? So this is how the uh, steps is. Okay, so you start with the source. You need to provide all the data, all the details. Then we have a destination. So under the destination, you need to all provide all the connection details. It will get connected. So then you need to start your initial synchronization. So then you can just access your destination through this. Okay, so where uh, they provide all the basic details here. Okay, so. Uh, so you can see right now my destination seat is active. Okay, so uh, if I just click on the destination here Okay, so here you can see so all the uh, details. Okay, so when when it was uh, Triggered and all the basic details you can just access like status and all the logs. Okay, you can see all the logs over here Okay, uh, so then schema Okay, usage. Okay, so then about the setup information and in the setup information, you can just see the connection details about the settings. Okay, so what was uh, how we can set the synchronized frequency. Okay, so if I want to delete the connection, how I can just let it, you can just access everything from here. Okay, so like status. Okay, if you're clicking on to this particular connection. Okay. Uh, so even you'll get an alerts. Okay, so in your email also. Okay, so when the installation, when the synchronization gets starts. Okay. Uh, so uh, this is uh, so if I just go and check in the destination this is what the destination is and all the logs you can see and the users alerts right so all the basic details you can just access from here okay so this is uh, all about uh, connecting um, from source to destination with help of Google Sheets and Snowflake I hope you understood if you're finding any difficulty let me know in the discussion forum Hello everyone. Okay, so in this video, let's see uh, uh, one example for demo for transformation. Okay, so what I've done is like I have just downloaded the uh, a data set called uh, uh, Avengers. Okay, so I'll just show you that uh, this is uh, what the data is. Okay, so here, uh, this is what the data is. Okay, we have URL. Okay, so we have appearance, current. Okay, this, this is what the data uh, I just downloaded okay this is what avengers data is okay so that data has been uploaded uh, inside the drive okay so avengers data so we know how to add the connections right so for the google sheets okay have just followed the same steps have just connected and uh, this is what uh, uh the uh, once i followed the steps okay so you can see uh, this is what the uh, avengers uh, table 
okay so i have done the synchronization and in the snowflake okay so you can see this avengers table over here okay so if i just preview the data okay so uh, this is what my data is right now okay so if i want to perform some of the transformation okay so in the fire train okay so we have something called so until uh, here i think it's the same steps okay what we have done in the previous demo okay so i just done this because i need to uh it's like the same steps or whatever i've just showed you okay in the previous videos okay so once you have uh, uh, uh so even uh this also have just showed you the different tabs like schema setup usage and if you want to synchronize and you can just set all the uh schedules and all those things right so and this destinations whatever the table you have created you can just check the destinations from here that is the snowflake okay body have connected so if you go to the transformations okay uh, so you can create a new transformation okay so I, uh, I already created one transformation okay so if i just click on to this i'll just uh, once i have show, shown this like what is the transformation i have done you can just go and follow the same procedure okay so uh, this is what the transformation i have done okay so uh, so you can see this is uh, uh once i just go back okay so let's see like if i want to create a new transformation okay so i'll just go to plus okay so where you can add the name of the trans uh, transformation and you need to write the sql query once you write the sql query okay so you can just schedule it okay so using uh schedule type is like either it's a new data or you want to time schedule it and save and run so as soon as you run so the transformation will be applied okay so whatever the transformation have applied and created here okay you can see so if i just go this is what the transformation have just created that is create avengers view okay so if i just click on edit transformation this is what the transformation have done like create or replace okay so i'm just doing doing a name alias for the avengers name and the year okay so if i just check here okay so you can see uh it has been changed okay so once that uh you run the transformation there okay so you can see like we have something called transformation view if i just click on to this transformation view and preview this data so you can see right now uh here name we have as name alias okay and here we have uh year okay so this has been changed to okay so if i just preview this data that is transform data you can see it has been uh the, where we have changed the column name that is avengers name and avengers years okay this is what the code we have written here right sql script so select name alias as avengers name and years as avengers years from this database okay so all these details you can just get it from here itself right so uh so if you want to get the path and all the details you can just uh uh, get it from here right so you can see this is a table uh, path here right so uh, this is how we for uh, create the test uh, what uh, transformations okay so uh, this is very same one this is a very handy okay you can see like uh, within a few clicks we can just perform on if you want to delete the transformation you can just rightly click uh, delete it it's very simple right anyone you can just enable and disable it okay so if i just uh, go back uh, once again uh so this is on this table yeah so in the transformations yeah so if you want to add it right so you can just uh, type the sql query and can just uh save and run okay so this is all about the transformations okay so uh i hope uh, you understood the uh what is fire train and what we can do with help of it some of its connectors and demo of it okay and this is very simple it's very handy okay so if you have any doubts and anything if you want to uh, request for you can just uh, discuss in the uh, discussion forum okay which is available okay so uh hello everyone so welcome back so in this video let's see how we can just add a connectors okay so uh so for example if i want to add the sales connector okay so i'll just go for uh sales sales force right uh or else you can just search here <coughs> okay so sales force okay so if i just click on the sales force go to the continuous setup okay so for this uh, 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 uh there are some prerequisite that is you should have the sales force enterprise level account plan or hire or purchase salesforce api okay so so it's very simple okay so you need to first uh, follow the uh, setup instructions like uh, uh, you need to if you um, <coughs> like this option like if you want to enable the history tracking uh, then disable the spip sections okay you can see all the procedure here like how we can just disable okay so next is like uh, you want to create a new uh, user and profile in the salesforce that's what you need to go to the salesforce uh, in the administrator privileges you need to go to user then click on setup which will be on the right screen right so then under the administration type click on profiles then in, uh, then go to the new profiles and add the read only to it and this is what the certain steps is okay if you follow the steps you'll be able to connect uh, to the salesforce and uh, and import the data uh, from the salesforce okay so this is how like there are n number of connectors okay so for example if you want to connect with any other uh <clears throat> like amazon s3 right so you can just go to the continuous setup okay <clears throat> 
this is what the steps you need to follow okay so these are some of the prerequisite that is uh, to connect aws s3 bucket to fire you need to s3 bucket containing a file to support it, uh, types and encodings uh, for private or encrypted buckets okay so with the ability to grant fire permissions and read the bucket okay so you have this some of the prerequisite to connect with the fire train okay so that's what this is all the certain steps you can see like they have given uh, with the screenshots okay so where you can just connect easily okay so this is all about the different connectors okay <coughs>